Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over the hash table data structure. Now there are two different types of hash tables. One is called one employs separate chaining and the other employs open addressing. Now these are two different ways to really deal with collisions. Collisions occur when your key value pair in a hash table or you have multiple keys that have the exact same hash. When that happens, you need to either rehash a key such that it gets a different and unique hash or what you need to do is you need to say that's acceptable, but this key will occupy a distinct space separate from the other key that resulted in the same hash. We are going to be looking at separate chaining, so using linked lists in order to prevent or rather uh, deal with collisions. So let's get started. So of course we need our headers and we are going to be using linked lists, so we need list. And we're going to be using the namespace std often, so let's include that. And in our linked list, we're going to have a key value pair. The key will be of integer type, and the value will be of string type. The reason being is we're going to be using a hash table to implement um, a phone book. So let's just use a phone number, a three-digit phone number, and they're going to have somebody's name. So let's say Jimmy. That's how the key value pair is going to look like. So what exactly needs to be inside a hash table? Well, first of all, you need to decide how many groups, when you're using a, uh, when you're using a separate chaining method, you need to decide how many lists you're actually going to use. So let's specify that at the beginning. So we will have a constant amount of lists, so hash groups. And that constant amount is going to be, let's say, 10. Now we're going to have an array that's going to store lists, and each list is going to store pairs. It might store no pairs, it might have 20 pairs, it might have a million pairs. So how that's going to look is we're going to have an array of type list that will have a pair. The pair will store a key of type int and a value of type string. Once again, we are storing phone numbers and names. Let's call that array table, and it's going to be of size groups, hash groups, which is 10. Hence, list one, is going to be index 0, list 2, index 1, yada yada yada. Alright, now that we understand how that works, let's now look at the public functions we need to define. There are several public functions, but usually the first one you can think about in any data structure is whether that data structure is empty or not. So we'll have a bool is empty, and let's make it const. Whoops, misclick. Now we also need a hashing function hash table wouldn't be a hash table without a hash function. That hash function is going to take our key and spit out an integer. The next thing we need to do is we need to know how to insert an item. Now, to for that item, we are going to need a key and a value. This is considered one item, one pair that will be inputted into our list here. Next, we will be learning how to remove an item, or what we will need to do is remove an item. And because each key is distinct, and each key only appears once, we will only be removing one item when we call this function. We also want to be able to search this hash table. So what do we want to do to search? We want to input a key and receive a string value in return. String. Search item. Let's call it search table. Int key. Let's also be a little more expressive and have a print table function that prints the contents of the hash table. Awesome. Let's start with the easiest thing, and that's going to be whether it's empty. So how do I know whether this hash table is empty? Well, we have a hash table. We have a table, which is an array of several list objects. Each list object can have zero pairs, one pair, as many pairs as it likes. So what we need to do is we need to find out whether the cumulative size of each list, list one, list two, list three, list four, etc., is greater or equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, well, we know that this whole entire hash table is empty. If it's greater than zero, then we know at least one of these lists has a pair, a key value pair. So let's call this variable sum. Now let's say, um, I forgot my const. Now let's say for i, int i, i is less than hash groups, i plus plus, we want to go over each hash group, so each list, and ask it whether it's empty. So we want to sum the size of each list. So this will give us list i. 
and we want to find its size. Now, if sum is zero, then what we want to do is we want to say, yes, it's empty. If sum is not zero, then we want to return false. Simple. Let's look at our next function. It's a hashing function, it's a hash table. Hash function, we put in a key. And because there are only 10 different lists that we have, we want to return a value between zero and nine, right? Arrays are zero, uh, zero based. So how do we do that? Well, we can simply return uh, the modulus of this key with hash groups. So if we have a key that let's say is 905, key is 905, in return, this function will spit out five. Awesome. Okay. This five will then be the sixth list in this table because this table is an array that's zero based. Awesome. Now let's move on to the insert function. We need to insert a key and a value as a pair. And this is where this gets a little more involved. So when we think about it, we have an array of lists. Now we put in a key and we want to put in a value that corresponds that uh, as a pair. That key will be hashed. So we need a hash value to correspond to that key. Hash. Now whatever the result of this hash will signify which list this key value pair needs to go into. Okay, So we have a we'll call it a cell, which will be the list that we will put in this key value pair into, which will really be the table at a given index. Awesome. Now we also need an iterator to the beginning of this list. And before we actually go over and iterate upon the list, we need to ask ourselves why we're iterating upon it to, in the first place. Why don't we just push this pair into this list. Well, we need to know whether the key that we're inputting exists or not. Now I'm going to give the program the benefit of the doubt and start it off assuming that this key doesn't exist. But we need to validate that. We need to make sure it doesn't exist. So we'll be iterating over this respective list to make sure that this key does not exist. If it does exist, what we want to do is replace the value of that key with this new value that we're inputting. So let's do that. Make sure that continues until the end and it chugs along until it reaches that end. Now if the first, which is the key, is equivalent to the key we would like to put in, well then what we want to say is yes, the key exists. We also want to replace the value corresponding to that key. Then we want to break out of this loop because each key is distinct, it will only appear once. Now let's be expressive and tell the user that hey, key has been replaced, a uh, value has been replaced. Key exists. Simple. Now we want to say, okay, let's say we've gone over this list and we notice that the key does not in fact exist. So if it doesn't exist, what we want to do is we want to push this key value pair back into that list. And place back key. Remember that this cell is indeed the list that we're interested in. Awesome. Now we want to return. All right, let's look at our remove function. Our remove function is also involved and to some extent mirrors this insert function, but it only takes a key because each key is distinct. It will either be in the hash table or it will not be in the hash table. So let's copy some of this here because the beginning is quite similar. We have to find the list of interest and we do so by finding the hash value of the key. So it'll give us a list we're interested in and we initiate or initialize an iterator to the beginning of that list. We then give it the benefit of the doubt by assuming the key does not exist. But if it does exist, then we'd like to remove that key value pair. So we iterate through and if we find this key, then we say key does exist. And now what we want to do is we want to expunge whatever that iterator is pointing to, that key value pair. So we use the list to do that. We take the cell, which is the list of interest, and we erase what the iterator is pointing to. Now this will in fact return us an iterator to the next 
to this will return an iterator to the next iterator of B iter. So B iter is at position two, this will return us an iterator at position three. Now we can assign it to a new iterator, but the fact that we've already gone through the motion, we found and erased what's in need, what we needed to erase, we can simply just reuse this old iterator um, because there's no need to continue. We've erased, we found what we wanted to and we've erased it. So let's just set it to this. If we don't set it to something, it's very likely we'll, we will have a bug and we will have a, we will potentially have a segmentation fault bug even if we don't break. So we still want to set the resultant return value of this uh, to something. So we're setting it equal to B iter. Now here we will give them some nice expressive info. We will say, hey, item removed, and we will break from this loop. Now, if the item wasn't removed, then we will say, hey, item not found. And we will simply return. Cool. We have one more function, and that is to print everything. And this one is also simple, but let's think about it first. We start off at the first list. If the first list is empty, there's nothing to print, so we should skip it. And we should continue this process until we've printed out everything. So we want to do something like this. We want to start at the first list, so initialize i to 0. And we have 10 lists, so we'll limit it by our hash group. The arrays index bit as zero based, so we start with zero and we go up till nine. Remember, hash groups is 10. And we increment the iterator by one each time. Why is this giving me a, oh, I wrote if, it should be four. Awesome. Now, if the size of the list at this position is zero, then we want to continue. We don't want to go keep, keep going through the loop. If it's not, then hey, we want to actually print the contents of that list. So what we will do is we will say, uh, we will create an iterator that points to that list, beginning of that list, and we will iterate through it. As long as bitter does not equal march it on through, and we will say, hey, I want some info. The key is the first value of the pair, and the value is the second value of that pair. Awesome. And that's all we need to do to print. We can simply return here. So as you can see, we've implemented a hash table um, quite conveniently in under 100 lines. And now let's put it to the test. So we have a main function. In our main function, we want to create the hash table. Let's call it ht. And the first thing we want to do to make sure that our is empty function is correct is check if it's empty. If it is indeed empty, it should return a 1, meaning the correct answer corresponds to true. And let's reward ourselves for doing a good job. Otherwise, there's an issue. Uh-oh. We need to check our code. Cool. Now let's insert some stuff in, into the uh, into HT. We need a phone number and we need a name. couple of times and there we go what we're going to do is we're going to insert a couple of names and numbers and since the we're taking module is 10 really only the last digit matters to determine which list it will be in so just to make it easier on the eyes instead of too many nines let's just input some random numbers here and we don't want to have a million gems so let's give them random names, Tom, Bob, Sally, uh, Sandy, 
carb rub. Now let's also check whether or not our key exists part of our insert item function works. And we're going to insert a different person with the same number and see if that number or if that value was later overridden. So we will replace Rob with Rick. Cool. Now let's print the contents. And now let's start removing. Let's remove item, let's remove. You know what, Bob? You're gonna have a bad day. You're gonna be removed from our phone number book. And just to make sure that our remove item uh, is robust enough, we will remove a random key that is not in this hash table. Cool. And last but not least, we will change check once again if our hash table is empty. If it is indeed empty, then uh-oh, we made a mistake because this hash table has more items added to it than it has had removed from it. But if it is not empty, which means it will trigger false, then hey, correct answer. Good job. Awesome. So let's give it a spin. Now is the moment of truth. Oops. Okay, let's review. So the list was empty because the correct answer came up. This defaulted to one and that is correct. Good job. Now, the next thing we do is we insert all these items. We don't have any message that will tell us whether we've inserted the item or not, but we do have a message whether the value of an existing key value pair was overridden. As you can see, we get the warning message that tells us the value of Rob was replaced with Rick. We then printed out our table and we also removed an item successfully. We then tried to remove an item that didn't exist and it told us, hey, this wasn't found, no pair was removed. And at the end of all this, our hash table was indeed not empty. So correct answer was shown. That's it for today. Thanks for listening to the tutorial. I hope it helped you. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any comments, feedback, questions, feel free to email me or message me or leave something in the comments below. And um, I look forward to uh, the next tutorial. Bye, guys.